Knits, Ichi here, and welcome to another episode of the Tangerine Knits podcast. I hope you're all doing well. I feel like I blinked, and now we're already more than halfway through February, so I have no idea how that happened, but somehow this is the first knitting podcast of the year. I did put out my Everything I Knit in 2023 video two or three weeks ago, but I didn't talk about anything that was knitted or finished in 2024. So that's what this video is going to be all about. It'll be a recap of everything I've been working on in this year. And I actually have so many things that are finished because I've been on basically operation clear the needles. I've had a couple of lingering rips from last year that I finally finished up. And then I cast on some new things that I've been kind of that have been on my queue for a long time. And I finally got to as well. So I think I've got one, two, three, four, five, five finished objects and a lot of new whips as well because I feel like I've been really hit by this creative energy in the new year and I'm excited to share all of that with you. So to start with, we can start with my first finished object, which is what I'm wearing today. And this is the Eula Skenser by Sandiskarn. That's the pattern. And it does look a little bit different than what the pattern uh, looks like in the sample photos because I made a number of modifications. So a little bit of backstory, I wanted to make a red sweater for Chinese New Year, which I've been wanting to do since my last since last year. It was in my 2020 three knitting plans video in the beginning of the year, so about a year ago. And I thought a lot about the type of yarn and pattern and design that I wanted to make. It obviously has to be red. I want it to look somewhat luxe and fancy, but also pretty comfortable and flexible, so not too hot. Um, and in the end, I decided to use the Eula Skenser pattern because I like the lace yoke. I know a lot of people suggested knitting a red ranunculus to me, which I thought was a great idea, but I just already had this pattern, honestly, because I got the book and I had the pattern and I thought it was a similar type of idea with the lace yoke. So I decided to just use what I already have, but I did make some modifications. The first is the yarn choice. So the pattern calls for one strand of mohair. So it's a pretty fine gauge. I think it uses three millimeter needles and it also is relatively see-through, which is such a cool look but I wanted it to be a little bit more like everyday wearable. And so I wanted it to be more opaque. And for that reason, I decided to use one strand of mohair plus one strand of lace weight wool. So for the mohair, I used one strand of knitting for olive soft silk mohair in the color red current. And then I used the red of uh, Ling Yarns Merino 400, which is their lace weight extra fine merino wool. That wool is so extremely soft. I'll put a picture of the box that I received it in. I also got some sock yarn with it too. And I touched it and I just felt like, it really just felt like butter. It was so, so extremely soft. And the mohair, the knitting for all of mohair, as I'm sure many people have used it, it also is really soft. I was a little bit concerned that having a mohair against my skin would be a little bit uncomfortable. I feel like it's no longer the vogue to knit with mohair and everything, but I happen to have just discovered that I like mohair, at least the mohairs that I think I can tolerate, which knitting for all is one of them. So I did decide to use this mohair and it actually feels pretty great. I am wearing like a V-neck tank top underneath because the eyelets are a little bit see-through so for a little bit of coverage I'm wearing that but my neck is still directly touching this this material and I think it actually feels pretty good I think that my skin sensitivity has kind of decreased as time went on and I wore you know animal fibers a little bit more frequently but for whatever the reason this actually feels great so I'm really pleased about that and it's not too warm either maybe because I used a lace weight wool as opposed to a fingering that may have had something to do with it or maybe it's just like you know, it's the winter, it's not too, too hot. Um, so yeah, overall, I really like it. I did have to make some modifications because of my, the change in my yarn choice. So my gauge was a lot bigger, obviously, because I held it with an extra strand of yarn. And because of that, the smallest size in the pattern would still yield a measurement that's bigger than what I wanted. So I actually wound up kind of counting how many uh, repeats of each of these patterns there are and just finding like a multiple that worked while also taking out some pattern repeats. So I kind of created a new size that I kind of laid out and knitted accordingly. And luckily everything added up and it wasn't too complicated of a modification. I knitted the sleeve also, I think a little bit shorter than even I intended. I did what I usually do, which is before I knit the ribbing, I will put everything on hold. So both sleeves and the hem, and then I'll block it, wet block it and dry it to make sure that I know how long the sleeves are because I still have this idea that maybe I would wear this to like cook for Chinese New Year because a lot of times we're making dumplings. And I didn't want like super long sleeves that get in the way and gets all covered with flour and what have you. And so I wanted to have it just like 
be at my wrist essentially but I think as I wore it sleeves have shortened I know other people have mentioned this as well but now I feel like it's basically bracelet length obviously when you raise your arms the sleeve rise up a little bit but even when I hold it by my arms it's I think it's really kind of above this wrist bone so it's bracelet length and overall the feel is a little bit more fitted like it's not fitted but I'd say more less oversized I guess than what the pattern calls for so it is very much a different look but I think the pattern still looks really nice and I liked the garment that I ended up with even though I know it may not like fully embody the Eula Skenser vibe that the pattern originally called for. One really cool feature of this pattern is that there is there are short rows built into the neck so neck ribbing so the front is shorter than the back and I really really like that technique because the ribbing actually looks quite neat. It's not very obvious that there are short rows built in, but it still brings up the back neck without disrupting any of the yoke. So if I had built it in after, built, built in short rows after the neck, then there may be a little bit of area behind the neck where it's just stockinette and there's not this lace pattern, but there's none of that happening because it's just naturally built into the ribs. So I thought that was a technique that I'll definitely keep in my back pocket. If I see other patterns that I like that don't have short rows built in, I'll definitely consider building it in to the back neck. Partly because I think you also use less yarn to kind of raise that neck because the short rows are much shorter than if you added the short neck, short rows under the yoke, which I've also done before and also had good results. So I think just different ways of doing um, you know, the same purpose of bringing up the neck. And I really like this one. So yeah, I've worn this once, actually not on Chinese New Year because I, so I, I tried to make an effort to celebrate Chinese New Year, um, even though it's not something that's like celebrated by the whole country. I live in the US where like I don't get the day off or anything. Um, this year was an, on Saturday, but I was on a week long work trip like up until Friday night, I got home like quite late at night. And so I would have liked to hold like a dumpling wrapping party, but I just didn't think that I would have it together enough to do that coming off of such a long trip. So I just ended up celebrating at home with my partner. And then I just didn't really feel like getting super dressed up. I think I wore like some red pajamas that I had. So luckily though, the next day was a Super Bowl. <laughs> so both teams were red and I figured what better chance than to wear my red sweater the day after Chinese New Year to a Super Bowl party. So I did wear it at that time and I, I was really comfortable with it. I think I was still a little bit curious of whether the mohair would feel nice or not and, and it does. So yeah, I'm very, very happy with it. I think the colors matched pretty nicely and the fabric looks really lovely and I really enjoy this color too. And I think it's, it's not so obviously festive that I couldn't wear it, you know, on a regular basis in my regular life, but it's also definitely would be great for a Christmas sweater or something too, so. Yep, that's my Eula Skensa. I also wanted to mention that my red Eula Skensa is also my entry into the pomegranate in along, which I co-hosted with Venicia from the Wooly Worker over in her Discord channel. So if you missed it, this was a knit along where we are basically knitting something red for the winter. And it was really fun to see everyone's finished finish objects. And it was super inspirational to see so many cool pieces. So thank you to everyone who participated. The knit along ended last weekend, so we are going to be drawing a winner soon. Okay, so next, let's go with this one. So this is my champagne cardigan by Petite Knit, and it's done. I've realized I should have buttoned it up so it's easier to show, but this is something that I cast on sometime in the fall. I bought the yarn way back in July. I had gotten um, one of the strands on Lovecrafts because they were having a sale. I think Lovecrafts was moving or something sometime in July, and that's the Noro Silk Garden Sock Solo in the color Ome. Uh, let me finish buttoning this up so I can show you. This is the beautiful fabric. So the tweed multicolored pieces um, come from the Noro Silk Garden Sock Solo. And then I held it with one strand of Assayer Silk Mohair, which I got while I was on my trip to Scotland over the summer as well. You can get Assayer in the US as well, but it's just cheaper um, in Europe, even, even the UK. And also the buttons I actually got on a trip to Japan. I think I briefly shared that I got, I went to this one store called Okadaya in Shinjuku in Tokyo. And they have just like a floor full of buttons, like drawers and drawers of buttons all organized by the type of button, the size. And it was just like one of the most amazing places I've ever been to. And I, I picked these buttons that are like a darker tortoiseshell. I thought it would provide a nice contrast with this light pink yarn. And overall, it kind of really comes together and it feels kind of special that I've picked up pieces of 
the materials and you know for my travels last year i chose to use this noro so garden solo partly because i really really love the tweedy bits and i especially love when like a tweedy type of yarn is held with a mohair for that colorful but also dreamy hazy look and also because the Silk Garden Sock Solo has some silk and poly and white content, I believe. And so I figured that hopefully it would make it not like as overly warm to wear because it's not just a worsted weight wool or DK weight wool. I can't recall what the pattern originally calls for. But yeah, overall I've worn it and it's again, so, so comfortable. This is also, um, I bought this, I bought this mohair wanting to experiment with it in a cardigan that I knew would be, you know, I can layer underneath it because I still wasn't sure if, you know, I could wear mohair next to skin because I used to have really sensitive skin. But again, I don't know if my sensitivity has decreased or if I just found really nice mohairs, but this Isayer mohair is completely dreamy to wear. Like I can wear this with a short sleeve and just have no issues whatsoever. It feels really, really good. And it feels just like silky to the touch. I really, really love the fabric that this makes. And I really like the colors too. Like it pulls pink overall, but you can definitely see these multicolored specks, which I think are just so fun. I knitted this basically exactly to pattern. I really didn't make any modifications. I did the double knitted button band, which is so gorgeous. It took a really long time, but I actually didn't really mind it. Um, it was on kind of thicker needles, I think either four or 4.5 or something like that. So the needles are pretty comfortable to hold and I didn't really have any issues you know, knitting the button band this way. For the button holes, I did decide to use a different technique than what the pattern called for, which is, I think the pattern originally has you break the yarn when you make the button holes, but I had heard that, I think from Handmade by Florence's podcast, that in the Jenny Jacket V-neck, she has a video showing you how to make these button holes without breaking the yarn. And so that's what I ended up doing. And it was really convenient. I mean, who doesn't want to save yourself from weaving in extra ends? I think because of that, I actually did make a very slight modification is that I cast it on one fewer uh, stitch for the button band. So the button band is like one stitch fewer less, I guess, because the way that I looked at the video, I felt like you needed an odd number of stitches or an even number of stitches, whatever it was, like the pattern had you know, either odd or an even, I can't remember, but then the video in the Jenny Jacket V-neck had like the other option. And so I wasn't really sure how to adapt it. So I just wound up casting on one less stitch and I don't think it made a difference, especially because I think my gauge was a little bit bigger than the pattern called for anyway. So the overall effect is basically not really affected, I think. So yeah, I think I sized down one size, but only because my gauge was large, I think I still aim to get a size small measurement and the fit is really nice. I'll show some cutaways um, if I haven't already. So yeah, that was a really nice technique to have learned. And the other technique that I learned was sewing on the buttons, which I first, I've, I've done some cardigans before and I didn't really bother doing that because I was like, I know how to sew buttons. But the one thing that I noticed, I think in my field day cardigan that I knitted was that when I sewed the buttons on just as normal, I felt like the button was like digging into the fabric. And the reason for that is that because this button band is so thick, it's in a knitted material that when you just sew the button, to be flush against the, the button band, it's kind of just pressing, like really pressing on this button band, so causing kind of a dimple. And it just looks like it's pulling on the fabric and doesn't look the most pleasant. And Petite Knit has kind of accounted for that. And in the video, they showed an uh, like a method where basically you sew the button and you, I don't know if you can see, you can wrap the yarn a few times underneath the button. So I think you hold a needle or something that's thick to hold it in place as you're sewing it. So there's like a gap and the, that, the button is dangling. And then you take the yarn tail and you just wrap it a couple of times until it's pretty sturdy so that the button sticks up and there's a bit of a space so that when you button it up again, there there's a space there that the other button band, the button band with a button hole on it can kind of sit. So it doesn't like press into it like this. So I thought that was really clever and that technique actually made it a lot less annoying um, to me to sew the buttons. So I really recommend that video, whether you're sewing buttons on this cardigan or a different one. I think this technique looks really good and the button band lays really fl flush. So I really liked that. And yeah, overall thoughts are, I love this cardigan and I really, really like the fit of it. I feel like I'm almost kind of surprised when I was looking at pattern, the pattern pictures, I'm like, you know, it's such a simple design, you know, it's just a raglan. It's not even a compound raglan or anything like that, but just the yoke depth is is just really nice. I mean, I I don't know what else to say besides that 
the fact that like this type of shape is just something that I really enjoy in my garments and so I'm really pleased with this and overall it was a pretty because it's a pretty simple design it was a joy to knit as well so very much love this project oh and I should clarify that I had basically almost finished this in 2023 I think I just had like the sleeves left or something and so yeah I the majority of this I'd say was knitted in 2023 oh I guess speaking of the sleeves something else I did here let me grab it I was really interested in using like shorties for the sleeves and so I bought one interchangeable I think 4.5 millimeter needle um it's like an interchangeable set. So I think there's like a shorter needle pair and then also a shorter cable as well to help me knit the sleeve just to see what it's like. I've gotten fixed shorties for socks, but I think I didn't quite adjust. I didn't quite like get used to the feeling of it in my hand. So I felt like my hand kept cramping, but I was hoping that getting these like slightly longer needles and slightly bigger needles might be a little bit more comfortable. And I really, really, really enjoyed it. I felt like the, that made these sleeves go by so quickly. I just felt like I knitted, I just knit for a little bit and then all of a sudden it's time to decrease. So yeah, I normally knit using Magic Loop, which I also don't mind, but this just made it go by so much faster. I will say these needles are like about 25, I think, ish dollars per needle. So I haven't sprung for like the whole set just yet. I'm thinking that if I have a project where I feel like, you know, I really want to make the sleeves go faster, I would just get the needles kind of on an as needed basis. But I did really enjoy that and I'm glad I got to try it. And also, if you wanted to see the yarn itself, this is the Isayer Silk Mohair in the color Rose, and this is the uh, Noro Silk Garden Sock Sew in the color Ome. I think this yarn itself pulls a little bit cooler, whereas this is a lot, a little bit warmer, like corally, rosier. And together, yeah, I think the color is really nice. I was a little bit afraid at first that this is a little too, like, muted for my skin tone but I think when I wear like a white turtleneck or something underneath where there's some other fabric like right next to my face this complements it really well and I just feel really cute um in this color so yeah that's it for my champagne cardigan and let's go with the next piece that's the lingering one from 2023 so if you've been uh, watching this channel you may have seen this before this is my terrazzo sweater by petite knit the original pattern actually called for the yarn combination i use for my champagne cardigan so the original terrazzo sweater called for noro silk garden solo uh, held with the silk mohair but i actually just chose this color i just chose this pattern to have like a saddle shoulder pattern i've since gotten to knit other saddle shoulder patterns but i first cast this on back in like last march or april so almost a year ago and i decided to use this uh phil colana peruvian highland wool in the color fisherman blue because i already had it in stash and i wanted like a relatively simple sweatshirty type of sweater to wear and i think for that reason i wouldn't say this is the best choice just because this gives you a little bit more of like a fitted tailored looking sweater than like the sweatshirty very loose cozy type of sweater and i think that's that's totally fine but i if you remember me talking about this last time i was really talking about frogging it because i had knitted this at that point maybe i had knitted like one sleeve and hadn't knitted the other sleeve yet and i just felt like overall the sweater felt really fitted and i didn't I didn't like the way that felt, especially the sleeves. I felt like the sleeves here were really fitted. And when I said that, I was surprised at how many people in the comments were saying like, no, don't frog it. And I mean, some people were also like, oh, you know, if you don't love it, then there's no point in continuing. So I appreciate both sides of the, the comments there, but I don't know, because so many people said not to frog it, I was like, you know what, at least I'll wait. I'll like wait a couple of weeks and let this kind of sink in and then decide what to do with it. And then, you know, I tried it on again um, after a while and realized that, you know, the color isn't as bad as I thought it was. And then the fit also, I think, is salvageable. Like, the bust circumference is actually totally fine. The sleeve was just the main thing that was a little bit tight. And so I took someone else's comment, um, who someone else's suggestion in the comments that they sized up one size for the sleeves, and then the sleeves felt a lot better. And also... I just decided to do that as well. So I ended up frogging back one sleeve and then I sized up a needle size, then the rest of the body um, and I knitted the sleeves. And I think, you know what? It did help. The sleeves are still not like a loose sleeve, but it's no longer like super tight on my arm in a way that I didn't enjoy. So I actually think I like it a lot. It looks pretty cute. The only thing that I did that was, uh, only other thing I did that was different than the pattern is that the pattern calls for that big turtleneck, but I thought that it would just be way too warm for me to be practical. So I opted for like a, 
I did try to make a roll neck at first, but I just kind of winged it. I think for a roll neck, you basically knit your ribbing and then just start knitting stockinette and letting it roll. But somehow the way I did it, the roll looked really chunky and I didn't really love it. So I frogged that back and then just did a Italian bind off. Or I think I did a tubular bind off because I did the setup rolls with knit one, slip one, and then purl one, slip one. Excuse me, slip one, pearl one, you know, the double knitting before I bound off using the Italian bind off. And I think this does look nice. Um, the only thing is I think that the neck is a little bit tight. So when I put it on and the try clips, you might be able to see that I feel like it bunches up a little bit at the back. Like maybe the back is a little too high. So I'm not really sure what that's all about. And also I think this neck is also a little bit too high. So sometimes I just fold it inward, which looks a little bit bulky. So I don't know. I'm going to just wait on it for a little bit, but I might end up shortening the neck a little bit. And I had plenty of yarn left. I think I had like an extra ball or two of this yarn. So yeah, that's, I don't know if that's enough to really make anything, but I definitely have enough to make some modifications if I wanted to. But I guess if the only modification I want to do is shorten the neck, then I don't really need more yarn for that. But yeah, I'm pretty glad that I kept it. I mean, overall, I do really enjoy this fabric. I like that it's a melange color, so it looks a little bit heathered and multidimensional. When you hold it apart, it's not just like a flat blue. So I really enjoy that. And the yarn feels really nice too. It's not like super itchy or anything. So yeah, that's my terrazzo sweater. And thanks to everyone who encouraged me not to frog it. I'm really glad that I ended up just finishing it. And yeah, after like almost a year on the needles, this is finally complete. So after that, I really wanted to lean into the oversized sweatshirty type of sweater uh, for real. And so what I did, um, this wasn't cast on yet in the last video, but I decided to make the Lou Gensa by Sandisgarn, also from the same booklet that this Eula Gensa was found in. And here's what it looks like. This is super, super oversized. Like the sleeves look massive. Let's maybe compare how big the sleeves are. Oh yeah, <laughs> you can see this is like the difference in the sleeve length, the sleeve, uh, sleeve width. <laughs> um, this is a much more oversized, cozy sweatshirt type of feel. And it's, it's, I really like it. <laughs> I did use a different yarn than what's called for. I had gotten the Wool Addict's Air on sale at Wool & Company a while ago when I got the pink yarn, the pink version of this yarn for my Levitate Wrap. And so I got in this beige as well because I couldn't decide if I wanted to knit the Levitate Wrap in beige or pink. I wound up chosen the pink, so now I have the beige left, and I knew that I wanted to make it like an oversized type of sweatshirt. And because I already had the blue pattern in the book, um, the Santa Scarn book, I went for it. It looks really, really similar to the sweater number four, uh, sweater number nine by My Favorite Things Knitwear, but this raglan rib detail is actually like even bigger here than the one in the uh, sweater number nine pattern, which I already have. The other difference is that this pattern has short rows in the neck. So the sweater number nine pattern doesn't. I think the sweater number nine light version does, but the original one, which I have, does not. This I also basically knitted exactly to pattern. Didn't really make any modifications except to adjust for my row gauge because I realized after knitting that my row gauge is a little bit short. So I think I knitted a couple of rounds without increases in the body in order to, you know, lengthen the yoke before I split for the sleeves. But that's really just because my row gauge was short. Uh, let's see, I learned to do a Italian cast on for two by two rib, which isn't as complicated as it seems. The booklet also has an example, like has written instructions on how to do that, but there's also videos for doing that as well. And then similarly for the uh, bind off, it was also, you have to rearrange your stitches in two by two rib to be like basically one by one rib, and then you can do the bind offs. Again, there's a lot of clear videos on that. And the result is pretty nice. I mean, this, this yarn is so fuzzy that you can't really see it that clearly, but I think it does look pretty nice. Um, yeah, this overall, the yarn is like lighter than air. I mean, it's not lighter than air. That's just not possible. It's light. It's really airy for how big it is. It's yeah, lighter than you would think it is. That's what I'm trying to say. So it's extremely cozy. I feel like I'm just being hugged. This yarn has polyamide as the core and then the fibers that are blown through are like extra fine merino or fine merino or something like that. So it's really, really soft, but I don't think it's going to wear super well, um, but it's okay. I think I mostly view this as like a relaxed type of sweater rather than like a dress up type of sweater like this one. So yeah, I would recommend the pattern 
I really like this one as well, and I like having this really oversized sweater. Speaking of oversized, <laughs> uh, this one you've seen before when it's basically finished already. This is the Seaway pullover that I knitted for my boyfriend in Christmas. I won't talk too, too much about this because I have uh, at length in my previous videos, but I wanted to share that I finished it. I did briefly show this in my Everything I Knit in 2023 video as well, but this is knit using Cascade Eco Merino DK in the color Silver Mist, which is this really nice warm gray slash grayish type of color. I made a bunch of modifications to the pattern um, because it's a women's pattern, so I ended up lengthening the armholes and then length, like widening the sleeves up top and then also adding decreases to the sleeves in pattern which isn't built into the to the pattern itself and then i lengthened everything like the sleeves and the hem according to another sweater that my pa a partner has it blocked out beautifully he also doesn't find it itchy which is excellent news because he's also a bit sensitive to wool and this is 100 percent non-super wash wool but we both find it to be really really like soft like i think this is even less itchy than the Filcolana peruvian highland wool and i wouldn't call this itchy either so yeah, I think maybe the other modification was that I did the folded collar as opposed to the mock neck because we thought that would be what he preferred. So yeah, I think he's been really proud to wear it. I will say it hasn't been super cold where I live recently, so he hasn't wear he hasn't worn it a whole lot. Like there hasn't been such a big need for it, but over the holidays, he said he was wearing it a lot when we had a cold snap. So that's been really nice. I feel really proud to have made this for him. And yeah, I wanted to show you the finished project and then a picture of what it looks like on him, which I'll put <laughs> around now. And yeah, I really recommend the pattern as well. I thought it was pretty clear and I would definitely consider making one for myself, though I have something really similar that I'm making for myself in this pattern, in this yarn that, I don't know, we'll see when I'll get to it, but I still really liked it. Okay, I think I still have one last finished object. I think that's it, right? Yeah, one more finished object. And once again, like the majority of what I've shown was knitted like last year. They were just lingering whips that I didn't quite finish so it's not like I've been I feel like this makes it look as though I've been knitting like non-stop in the past two and a half months um but no some of them are already like largely completed especially that seaway pullover okay next thing is a is a small one this is a pair of onyx gloves which is a free pattern by universal yarn I did end up using one strand of mohair and one strand of fingering wool for this because I had this as leftovers from my vest number two spring edition the first one that I made in knitting for olive, soft silk mohair in the color ochre brown, and then uh, merino in the color dark cognac. And I knitted this at a much tighter gauge than what the pattern called for. I think I really tried to use the gauge that people use for mohair socks because I wanted a really dense glove that can be kind of windproof as much as possible. I mean, I know that your fingers are showing, but yeah, I really end up liking the ended up liking the fabric. It is very, very dense. And I really enjoy mohair gloves. It feels so nice. It feels really warm. I mostly use these when I'm like driving. So when the steering wheel is really cold, you can kind of, you know, <laughs> pull this over your hand and, and have it be a layer in between. And it's pretty simple to knit, actually. I was um, pleasantly surprised, I guess. I cast this on over Christmas and just knitted this like relatively quickly, I'd say. It has these twisted rib hems on the bottom, the top, and on the thumb as well. I think I knitted this taller than maybe what the pattern called for. So it goes like kind of above my knuckles. And if I really wanted to pull it up a little bit, I could like curl my fingers in it. And I think I really like that. I think when I see other gloves, they're kind of just go over like these knuckles, but I don't know. I wanted just a little bit more, <laughs> a little bit more coverage when I'm wearing gloves. So that's what I ended up going for. Yeah, would recommend the pattern, pretty straightforward, and has been serving me well. I think I have one more like almost finished object. I'm not sure if I should call it a finished object or or not, but it is, I mean, it's finished, but the ends aren't woven in. And this is the Kutar Beret by Sari Nordland. I think this has been quite popular. In fact, my mom had sent me a picture of someone's finished object of this yarn, uh, of this pattern the other day, and I thought it was really pretty. I love that it just looks like a flower on top. I had been considering making the Kutar cardigan for this yarn to make like a Chinese New Year type of cardigan, but I wound up using a sweater instead because um, I was pretty cardiganed out <laughs> at that time. But yeah, I think it's really pretty. My mom, this is for my mom, by the way, if I hadn't mentioned, she wanted to 
like she casually was wondering like if I could knit her a beret and so I was happy to do that and I, I kind of really I knew that I wanted to make this pattern as well and yeah it was really enjoyable the original pattern also calls for a pom-pom and I'm pretty sure I'm gonna make it but I haven't gotten to it yet and yeah the only reason I am not calling it finished yet is because I haven't <laughs> woven in the ends yet either I can try to put it on but honestly it's a bit tight on my head also because my um I have really thick hair too so it's gonna look a bit weird on me but my mom's head is more reasonably sized so I think it would fit her fine but oh man <laughs> this is what it kind of looks like yeah, I think it's very pretty. Again, it's a bit tight on my head, I know. Um, yeah, and I think I'll ask her if she wants me to add the pom-pom as well. The yarn that I use, the original pa pattern calls for one strand of fingering wool, one strand of mohair, or you can use one strand of DK. And I decided to use two strands of fingering to make a DK. So the reason is because I already had Phil Kalana Arveta from knitting a pair of socks. And so I figured I'd just get another strand of fingering to hold with it. And so I bought the Cascade 220 fingering, which is the yarn that I've always wanted to try. The yarns are both black. They they do feel kind of different, but they're, yeah, they, they blended together, I think, well enough. And at first I was a little bit daunted by knitting a lace work pattern in black yarn. Like, <laughs> how the heck would I see anything? But it ended up not being too bad. I ended up putting a stitch markers in between every like chart repeat so it was easier for me to tell if I'm like missing a stitch or something I, I can correct that in that one pattern repeat section as opposed to finishing the whole round and being like oh it doesn't match up so that was a, a really good uh technique um in the big I used magic loop for the whole thing I don't really have dpns I have a, a set but it doesn't work super well like my tension ends up being not very good when I use that even on stockinette because I think they're just not super smooth so instead of investing the time or money to on dpns I just used magic loop which I usually don't mind but definitely when I was able to knit it like without using magic loop when it got much bigger it was so much faster to knit so yeah it was still overall like progress faster than I would expect I mean for something that's not a sweater like it just grows so much quickly because there's less of overall fabric that you need to make um, I I did take a bit of time on it because I couldn't just knit it any time. I needed like good lighting and I needed to have like the chart in front of me, etc. So I could only knit it when I could pay like 100% attention to it. But I still really enjoyed it. it. Has an I cord finish, which again maybe I'll have my mom try it and if it's too tight on her, I'll just re knit the I cord. Wouldn't be a big deal. And of course, after I finished it, it looks kind of like a beanie. It's like this, you know. Um, but I saw the tip to block it over a dinner plate, which I did, which makes it look a lot more like a beret. So this is a really, really cool pattern. I would definitely consider making one for myself, but um, probably not like anytime soon. But I'm excited to give this to my mom and I hope she likes it. Okay, I think now we can finally move on to whips. And I have three whips to show. So the first one is something that I think I promised to cast on before December. Um, I think I made that promise either publicly or just to myself. And here it is. This is an uh, a work in progress of my wall garden pullover, which is a design by Erica Tokai. I got this in a kit that was sold by Puppy Yarn when I, again, when I was in Japan um, last year. And it's a beautiful intarsia sweater that is did in pieces. So this is the, this is the back panel. I think you start with a provisional cast on, then you knit it bottom up, and then eventually it's going to finish with Japanese short rows. I finished it once already, but I think I miscounted the number of like decreases you make for the, for the arm. And I think I probably could have just fudged it. Like when I was sewing it, I could have just sewed, um, like a few stitches in to mimic that like deeper decrease. But I don't know. I just decided that I will set myself up for success and just go back and re-knit it. So I was going back to re-knit this top panel before, right after the sleeve, uh, the, the armhole decreases. Um, so I haven't finished that yet. I think I'm at the point I need to count like how many rows I need to knit before I start, you know, making the armhole. But I just <laughs> haven't found the motivation to start counting. But yeah, I did cast this on over Christmas. I also already wove in the ends. I think I'll show a picture of the ends here. Um, so you can see how many ends there are. I mean, I think to be fair, I could have been even more, I think I could have gotten less ends if I just held longer floats, but I don't know. I was experimenting it for the first time. This is my first project doing intarsia and I did end up doing a combination of intarsia and stranded knitting, as you can see here. 
I know there looks it looks like there's still ends sticking out, but I've already woven them in. I just was a little bit nervous to like cut them super close in case it comes loose and I need to like reweave them in again. Um, so that's what it looks like, but I think I think it'll be okay. But yeah, it was not as complicated as I thought. I think the hardest part is definitely yarn management, making sure things don't get really tangled up. And then eventually there's going to be embroidery to make like the window frames and make the leaves and things like that. So yeah, it's been really fun to knit, but I, again, it's something that you need to be paying attention to the whole time. So I'm taking it slow. I told myself that I'm not going to like, you know, push myself to finish it at a certain time. I just really want to enjoy the process. I'm not like in a huge rush to be able to wear it. So I'm taking it as like a joys in the journey type of project. And so that's why I'm not making like super quick progress on it. Um, but I do think I want to finish it at the end of this year. So we'll see how that goes. I will say um, a huge shout out to Athena from the Seedling Stitch podcast, who also knitted this sweater. Um, and her version is really beautiful. And I'm very grateful for her for paving the way for like talking through the construction and experience and tips and tricks for making the sweater because the pattern is fully in Japanese. It's mostly charted, but there are still like some symbols that I didn't know. Like the symbol for Japanese short row, I mean, like I didn't know what symbol, like I didn't know that's what that symbol meant. And it wasn't super easy to just Google like what that symbol is. It didn't show up in the classic like like legends that I've seen for what symbols mean in Japanese patterns. And so I think I heard her mention it in her knitting podcast talking about the sweater. And I was like, oh my goodness, thank goodness you said that because I don't think I would have known that that's what that meant, you know? I, I ripped out the part with the Japanese short rows because I was trying to redo it, but I really like the technique. Maybe I'll talk more, more about it next time if I'm if I've gotten to that part yet. So yeah, this is going to be a long-term whip and I'm really excited to keep working on it. The next whip is what I've been spending the most time on lately and that is also a book uh from the uh, Sandus Gone booklet I think I've knitted quite a number of things from that booklet recently that this is the Gia zipper sweater and it's knit using two strands held together uh one is tropical lane IDL which is a fingering weight maybe more like sport weight merino um and one strand of Isayer alpaca one so do I have the yarn this is the Isari Alpaca one in, in the color time. This is my first time using this yarn. And then the other yarn, I don't have any more balls of it left, but this is what <clears throat> I originally made with it. So this is, uh, if you remember the Elizabeth blouse, I think I mentioned it once in one of my previous videos. I had cast this on all the way back in October. Actually on my trip to Japan, I started making the collar and I used one strand of the Tropical Lane IDL, which is this green color, because this is basically the same yardage and weight as Focalana Pernilla, which is one of the recommended yarns for the Elizabeth blouse. So I, I started knitting it, but honestly, I'm just not a huge fan of the fabric by itself for this pattern. And I also am not crazy about this color. I love green. Green is one of my favorite colors, but this particular shade of green, it just, it just didn't sing. <laughs> um, so yeah, I kind of tuckered out <laughs> on my ability to keep going at this because I didn't really love it, but this still felt like a lot of knitting. I also had some rowing out issues. I don't really know why in particular. I think the gauge itself is pretty loose, which I think exacerbates any rowing out issues, but I tried to like individually adjust each stitch, but in the end it still looked not so great. And so I kind of sat on it a little while to think, what would I do with this yarn? Do I continue? Do I make another pattern? And ultimately I decided that I think I just fundamentally don't love this particular fabric and color and so might as well hold it with something else. And I considered using a mohair, but I really, really wanted to try using the alpaca one um, because I've heard such great things about it. And then I decided to take a chance and get this lighter color. They don't really have a close match to this color. They have another green called leaf that's a little bit darker, but it's definitely a different tone. So I decided to just try using the time and, and see how it works. And this is what it ends up looking like. I think the time is a lot more yellow, so overall the color pulls like more yellowish green, which I actually end up really liking. At first when I saw the swatch, I feel like when you marl yarns, the swatch itself always looks like so much more marled than when you have a larger piece. And I, I do like it. I like this more, the, the bigger the pattern became, the yarn, uh, project became, the more I liked it. So here's what it looks like. The pattern itself is super interesting. I think this is the like the most number of techniques I've used probably in one pattern lately. So at first you knit uh, 
just like a, a drop shoulder so you uh, this is all just like open neckline and you actually end up picking up stitches on this side to make this one trapezoidal shape ish of the front neck I guess and then you do the same on the other side and this is all double knitted so it's really thick and cushy and well a lot of knitting to be honest and then after you knit both of the bands you end up picking up stitches around the back as well and then joining them to to knit this collar which is also double knitted and then you're going to have the zipper sewn in the like here in between and then there's this little strip of facing that covers the back of the zipper so it looks really uniform out from the inside as well because I think the pattern like the zipper is going to flop open like this so you, you want to cover the zipper I have never sewn in a zipper but I did order one it took me quite a while to order it I think I just saw the notification that it's been delivered so I need to go grab it but I got one with like a golden pole um, and the fabric itself is green so I hope it matches nicely and yeah other than that yep drop shoulder style I did struggle a little bit well not I didn't not really struggle, but I did have to do some guesswork because the pattern didn't give a row gauge. I think Santa's Garn probably doesn't need to do that because their patterns are written for their yarns. And so if you meet row, uh, stitch gauge in the yarn, then chances are you'll probably meet row gauge too. So I think that's probably why they don't provide row gauge. But because of that, I didn't, and I didn't really know like how, whether my row gauge in this new yarn like fits or not. So for example, when it says to do like when the measurements, the length measurements are given in terms of rows or like how many, how many row repeats you have to do, then you really have to rely on your row gauge being accurate for the whole length to be accurate. Because it wasn't like knit for 10 centimeters. If it says knit like X number of rows, you don't really know if that many rows is supposed to get you 10 centimeters or like 15 centimeters, you know? So to hedge my bets, I, because I figured like typically my row gauge tends to be too short. I decided to knit the arm, arm opening like deeper because I just didn't want like a super skinny arm and turns out when I was picking up stitches this way I calculated my pickup rate by measuring my own stitch and row gauge and in the end I ended up having like a bigger arm for my size than what the pattern calls for so maybe my row gauge wasn't that off but because of that I think I just built in a little bit more decreases to still like adjust and I think it looks fine I did already block the body, so not the sleeve, but the pattern, the, the fabric for the body has been blocked and it's really soft, really, really squishy and dense, but really cozy and it feels really great around the skin. It's not itchy at all and I'm just really, really excited to wear it. It has been kind of a labor of love because this neckband took so much time to knit, but I have now, I think, finished both sleeves besides the ribbing. I think I mentioned that typically I'll block everything before I knit the ribbing just so I have a good sense of the length. So I'm going to finish knitting the body before I block everything and then figure out how much of the ribbing I need to I need to knit. I do hope I don't run out of yarn. So at this point, I only have like this much of the Tropical Lane left. I waited to frog this Elizabeth blouse portion until I could film this video and show you what it looks like by itself. But after this, I think I'm just going to knit it from, <laughs> from this uh, piece of fabric. I need, I think, still the body and the ribbing. So maybe cutting it tight. Um, I'm gonna look around to see if I happen to have more of this yarn. I don't think I do, and I'm pretty sure it's discontinued. It's definitely not available at an local yarn store anymore. So hopefully it's enough for me to get by. If not, I don't know. I'll have to figure something out. Oh, I really hope it's enough. <laughs> so keep you posted. And then the last whip that I have was a little bit spontaneous basically for that week-long work trip that I had. I wanted to bring something to knit like, you know, on the plane or at the airport or what have you, but I didn't really have any projects that were like really mindlessly to be knitted. Like the Gia zipper sweater was just kind of big. I didn't want to carry all of that with me when I had limited space. And I thought about casting on a new sock, but just didn't really have anything in mind. And so I decided to just bring like one ball of this yarn and cast on the Guernsey Genza, again, also from the Santa's Garn booklet. So this is really like the Santa's Garn 2202 podcast episode. Um, I I basically really love all the designs in the booklet and I figured I already have all those patterns. I might as well just knit them because I'm interested in them anyway. Um, so I'm in the middle of a row, so it's a bit hard to tell, but I'm basically just on the back panel still. <laughs> this is very difficult to show. I should have finished the row before I started this episode, but it looks really similar to the Ingrid sweater, which I do have and also brought with me on that trip. 
but it's a little bit different. Like these lattices are actual cables and they're a little bit thicker than the lattices in the Ingrid sweater. And yeah, I'm enjoying it so far. I actually was able to meet Gage using this yarn. Again, not using the Santa's Garn yarn, but the Cascade, uh, Cascade Eco Merino DK. So same fabric as my Seaway sweater. Um, but this is in the color, let's see, Sandy Beach. So it's a little bit more like sandy <laughs> and more yellowy than that grayish color. I think I like that grayish color better, but I bought this yarn first. I had it in stash because I wanted to knit the Hete sweater using a brown as a contrast, but I used the brown for another project and I just had five balls of this laying around. So I'm deciding to just, just knit this. I'm not sure if I'll need more yarn, but this yarn's easy to buy more of. So that shouldn't be a problem. I'm going to choose a size that has a lot of positive ease. So I think 30 centimeters, maybe 27 centimeters of positive ease. No, I think 35 to 37 centimeters of positive ease is, which, what, is what I'm going to have with this. So it's going to be super oversized, but I'm kind of excited about it. I really have started to like the extremely oversized look more and more as the time goes on. So yeah, I will be just chipping away at this, um, but I think my first priority is to finish my Gia Zipper sweater. Okay, that is all my whips, and I will now go through acquisitions. So some of these things were acquisitions, like my with this cascade 220 fingering for the for that hat um the alpaca one yeah those are all acquisitions another acquisition that i have oh that i'm really excited about is this uh this beautiful mohair here this is the cowgirl blues kid silk which is 70 percent mohair and 30 percent silk it's in this like gorgeous hand-dyed like rosy, like forest green um, type of colorway. I'll show a picture of the skein by itself. I really feel like the skein itself always looks even prettier than when it looks caked up or even knitted up, if I'm being honest. Um, I have a swatch here. This is two strands held together. And I think I'm going to knit a cumulus blouse with it. Again, like a very simple pattern that I know I like. I've knitted one before and it just would let the yarn shine. This was a little bit impulsive of a purchase. I basically went to my local knitting store to just look around. It was a weekend when my partner was out of town. So I think I'd like gone to a workout class and then I was just in the area and figured I'd stop in. And they had so many of the Cowgirl Blues Killed Silk on sale. And I spent just so long trying to decide what color to use. Um, and in the end, you know, if like when you look at, <laughs> when you look at something for so long and you get decision paralysis, sometimes the easier way out is just to not get anything. So I was really just like, do I really want anything? Do I need anything? Um, and ultimately, the just the skein won me over. I think when I first started knitting, I remember admiring these like beautiful hand dyed mohair yarns and really wanting them, but they're, you know, obviously very costly. And also I didn't know if I could taller mohair at the time, but I just looked at the skein and felt like this is exactly the type of mohair that I would have like dreamed to have and figured, you know what, like it's literally like 50% off right now. When am I ever going to get another chance to get something like this? So I just sprang for it. And in terms of softness, I don't think it's as soft right now as the Sayer or the Knitting for Olive Salt Silk Mohair, but it's also not super itchy. So I figured if I knit something with a v-neck like the um, Cumulus Blouse, then I have a better chance of being able to tolerate it. So that's what I think I'm going to do. If you have any other ideas for like a, you know, two-stranded mohair pattern using a hand-dyed mohair, so something that allows this to, to really shine, then I'm definitely open to suggestions. I am kind of considering the fortune sweater as well, but um, yeah, I'm not sure. I need to check the yardage. I probably don't have enough yardage. I think I got a total of uh, 200 grams. Let's see. I have four balls and each ball is... Oh, 50 grams. So each ball is 50 grams. So I have 200 grams. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited to, to cast something on like this. I think I swatched like as soon as I got home, I was that excited, but then I haven't cast on because I have so many, so many projects going on. Um, but yeah, like I said, I think I've just been feeling like really energized by, you know, creating something else. Oh, I have another acquisition, um, to show as well. So <laughs> brief backstory. I've been reading tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow, which is a book that's been, I think, quite popular recently. And I read it um, earlier this year and I thought it was so good. I highly recommend it. I really, really enjoyed it. It was such beautiful storytelling. There were so many quotes that I just remember wanting to write down in my notebook because they just really resonated with me. And without spoiling it, there is 
something in the book that has to do with the great hokusai print, like the great wave print. That's a traditional Japanese print. <laughs> How many times can I say print? And I was really inspired by it. And I remember seeing the rose knitwear um, wave vest, I think. And I really liked it. I will say I'm not sure if I see like waves in it, but I do get the general vibe and I really like the way it looks. So I thought I would, I thought of making something similar. And so I decided to go for the Cascade 220 fingering plus the Isayer Alpaca one in these colors. So the like a navy and a, um, like a, a white. The white are, is a pretty good match, but the navy, oh, I spent so long trying to pick, um, but I think they're, they're slightly different. This one is... I think it's called in the navy. They have a navy and an in the navy, and I think they're different. And it doesn't immediately say what color this is. But I'll put it in the description below. Oh, it's color 9573. And then this is a Sarah Packer one in midnight. I adore this midnight color. It's got like it's kind of like a petroleum blue plus purple mixed into it. So hopefully these two mixed together will give you like a lot of dimension. Um, I definitely think I like this color more than this, this navy, but hopefully together they would look nice. And I really wanted to make that vest. I couldn't really find that many, if at all, like other people wearing this, this vest. So I don't really know how it fits. So has anybody else like knitted that pattern or knitted anything else by the designer? Let me know. I'd love to hear your experience. So the last like acquisition slash plan that I have is inspired by this print, which is by the artist Bandage Brigade. I'll link them in the box below. My partner got me this print when he went to like a convention <clears throat> and this artist was one of the vendors and he has like a lot of t-shirts and other things by this vendor. We both really like their art style and you can see this, uh, this girl like wearing this teal kind of colored, I guess, sweater with these bold orange flowers. And I just really, really, really loved it. Um, the flowers themselves kind of remind me of poppies, although I'm not sure like what flowers they are, but they remind me of poppies and poppies are one of my favorite flowers. And I just really am inspired by this color combination. I thought, how cool would it be to knit something kind of like this? And so the pattern that I currently have in mind, and I'm open to recommendations, but it's the Nola cardigan. And it has obviously just the flowers on the sleeves, not all over the body, but I think that still gets the vibe across. I don't need it to be like a total replicate or anything. Um, so I think I might do that. And the pattern calls for, I think, Le Coton or something by Beaches and Bouches. I'm not sure how you say that, but um, it's like a cotton yarn with some other fibers in it. But I kind of wanted to make it out of like a wool and surrey, similar to my cumulus blouse. And so I got this yarn combination. So this is this is Goodwill by Pearl Soho. I've never tried this before, but I've heard so many good things. So I was really dying to try it. This color is called Teal Abyss. And I got three balls of this. And then I to hold with it, I got this Surrey, which is Cumulus Fiber Spates, which is uh, brushed alpaca silk, basically. And, you know, it's very soft like Surrey. And I think to there wasn't anything like exactly like this shade. And I was kind of hoping that these two held together would get me something similar. I had pretty good experience using a fluffy Surrey to like change the shade of the wool in a way that's still pretty cohesive and doesn't look too marled. So I'm hoping this, you know, <laughs> gets me that vibe. I haven't swatched yet, obviously. But basically I'm hoping that this gets me somewhere in between these two shades and something similar to that. And then for the orange, I considered buying more yarn for it, but then I looked in my stash and I already have like this blood orange yarn. Um, so this is the Knitting for Olive Soft Silk Mohair and Merino in the color blood orange. You can see I started knitting a glove with it, but I think I'm gonna frog it because I I don't I think I wanna use the yarn for that instead. I don't really need another pair of mohair gloves right now, is what I'm saying. Um, but this color, but to make it look a little bit more red, I was thinking of holding this Ling Yarns Merino in it also to also help me get gauge, because this I think may be a little too thin compared to these two, which is sport plus a Surrey. So I think the st three strands of this held together as the contrast to these might get me kind of close. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm thinking of right now. I am considering making like a project vlog or something. Don't hold me to that, but maybe now that I've said it into the universe, it's more likely to come true. <laughs> we'll see if that's really the case. <clears throat> but yeah, I'm still kind of deciding on what pattern I want to use. I think the first step is that I'll try and swatch 
and then I'll really try and see if the pattern works. I really like the Nola cardigan, especially like the wide sleeves and like this, this front slit in the sleeve, I really like as well. I just kind of wish it was a, a crew neck as opposed to a v-neck, but I think I should probably be able to make that modification on my own, I hope. Yeah, I may have to like, you know, knit the neck separately, like the neck afterwards or something like that, but I think I probably would be able to make that modification. So yeah, I, um, that's one of the, the plans as well after I chip away at some of my other, other projects. So yes, I think that was quite a lot of talking. That was quite a lot of projects and plans and whips, but yeah, I'm very excited by my knitting this year. I didn't film like a 2024 knitting intentions videos this year because I think I kind of just want to play it by year and let inspiration kind of take hold when it takes hold. I think I do have a general sense of like not buying yarn unless I have something specific I want to make with it. Um, but I think everybody kind of says that, so we'll see how that goes. And yeah, I'm excited to use up my yarn, use up the patterns that I already have and kind of do some creative um, ideas as well every now and then to, to keep things fun. <laughs> so yeah, if you watched all the way up to here, thank you so much for being with me and choosing to spend time with me. That's honestly a honor. I hope you enjoy this video and I hope that I'll get to see you in the next one. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye everyone.